I'm Catherine Maudsley, Curator Senior Advisor of the M.K. Lau Collection in Hong Kong. We welcome you to A Taste of the Masters, co-presented with Sotheby's. The M.K. Lau Collection was created by Victor Lowe and is named in honor of his wife. The artworks are the finest examples of their period and reflect the interests of the artists behind them. In particular, their concern for nature predates our own anxieties about the state of the planet today. Beginning in the late 1970s, the M.K. Lau collection coincides with China's opening up to the world and thus its transformation into the modern culture we know. When we talk about Chinese art, mm. many people instantly reference the living contemporary artists. Yes. This is completely different. Yes. Why is this important and why should we know okay. about it? It's so important because the focus of this collection, M.K. Lau collection, is 20th century Chinese painting. Now our view is that Chinese painting is so full of life, it's so full of vitality, that although the artists are no longer with us, the majority here are 20th century, their art, their creativity, the energy is there. And the way we access that is by knowing how to look at it. We'll take a little bit deeper view than first, first glance. On the surface, it appears to be so still mm. and serene, so important in that quietness. Yes. But you talk about motion and yes. dynamism. Yes. How did these masters capture that movement? So Chinese painting is very simple. Paper or silk, that's what we painted on. The implement is a brush and ink, but what animates it is the inner life, the transmission of qi energy, total vitality energy, so that when we look at the brush, we can trace, is, it, is the artist pushing with the brush? Is he pulling back? Is he very delicate? Is he so nuanced? And by absorbing that, we actually commune with the artist. So how can that be more alive? How can that be more contemporary? We wanted to showcase artists from the Guangdong region, very close to home, Lingnan School. Artists who were in the south, defined as it, using the Yangtze River as our division point, uh, so Shanghai area, and then of course in the north, Beijing area and so on. So the exhibition gives a pretty good overview of truly what was happening in China. And through China. Through China. This is important because how can one build a collection of 20th century Chinese paintings without considering China as a whole? As we walk through this extraordinary showcase of only 36 works okay, of yeah. many, many more yes. that you have, we see so many references to the natural world, mm. mists, mountaintops, mm. waterfalls, oxes, yes. agriculture, yes. farming. It seems that our ancestors knew so much about how to peacefully coexist with the planet. The Chinese approach is more sophisticated in a certain way because it involves going into nature, absorbing what is that quality of nature, and then recreating it. So very often, say for example, if it's replication of a mountain, it's not just what does that mountain look like? The willow tree, how it's poetically falling, the gentleness, the rhythm, what happens when the wind comes to a branch. So the artist will go into nature and internalize, absorb that, and then in the studio afterwards, create that essential experience. This is why it's so moving, because it stands the test of time. Let's look at the, the pine needles. Pine needles we know are sharp. So the brushwork here is actually almost like stabbing the paper. Not in a violent way, but in a very dynamic way of how do I get that feeling of the sharp pine needles? And you can, we want to look also at the, the qualities of the ink, black, black, black ink, light, medium gray, so on and so forth. The colors of ink, which is unlike a Western approach where we think color is, is what, red, blue, yellow, whatever, no. Ink has its own colors. So we get the sense of this piercing quality of the pine needles. We also immediately get the feeling of the weight of the snow. Mm. We can feel the snow is a little bit wet, right? It's not dry, fluffy snow. And how was this achieved? It's by doing nothing. You see, this is emptiness. This is the empty paper. So this is not 
<laughs> ink, they just left it. Yeah. So that comfort with emptiness, leaving open spaces, leaving breathing room, is really essential to the aesthetic of Chinese painting. That's also a sign of confidence when we work in music, for example, to not be scared of silences Absolutely. and gaps. Because you need the rhythm, you need the cadence, you need the, you know, it's symphonic, basically. And let me, let me just throw in a little, uh, something a little else. A lot of people think, you know, modern Western art, abstraction, Jackson Pollock, we're all familiar with. Yes, 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 great, great, great. Can we see something similar in a Chinese painting? Would you like to join me, James, and let's say, look at only that section, just this. Just that beautiful abstraction, line, space. What do you see? What do you see here? I'm James Chow. Join us again on the China Current for this three-part series with the MK Lao Collection.